Let's move on to chapter one, why tanks fail. Have you ever wondered why some tanks last for 50 years or more, and some replacement tanks fail in less than one year? Are some individual tanks that much better or worse than other similar tanks made by the same manufacturer in the same plant and at the same time? Research indicates that most tank failures can be attributed to one of four reasons. In descending order from the most likely to the least likely, they are corrosion, on-site damage, transportation damage, and manufacturing defects. Let's take a look at the number one reason tanks fail, corrosion. And corrosion can be both internal or external. Internal corrosion is the main cause of above ground tank failure. The presence of water in the tank enables bacteria to thrive. The bacteria leads to the creation of a biologically active sludge that can accelerate the rate of corrosion of steel tank and system components such as filters and pump strainers. This is known as microbial induced corrosion. There are typically four layers in the tank. The top layer is the clean fuel. The second layer is a mixture containing bacteria, water, and fuel. The third is water from condensation, delivery, loose fittings, loose fill, or vent caps. The bottom layer contains sludge and degraded fuel products. Now the second layer can be thought of as a bacterial incubator with conditions perfect for the forming of bacteria. So the bacteria in the second level often excrete substances that mix with water to create a crude form of acid that oxidizes or eats away the steel tank bottom. And this all has a negative effect on the fuel quality, the steel tank bottom, and all the system components. Keeping water out of above ground heating fuel storage tanks will help maintain fuel quality, reduce the frequency of service issues, and help prevent corrosion related component failures. Drain water before installation. Tanks can accumulate water during shipment and storage. When a tank is installed with water already in it, its lifespan is likely to be greatly reduced. Keep tanks full during the summer. Topping off tanks in the late spring can help reduce the amount of water generated by condensation. Condensation can generate about one quart of water in a tank that was left one quart of full during the off season. Install tanks inside wherever possible. An outside above ground storage tank is warm during the day and cooled at night. And by doing this, they accumulate more water from condensation than an above ground storage tank that's installed indoors where the temperature variation is less. If a tank must be installed outdoors, encourage the customer to consider protecting it with an enclosure which shades the tank and helps reduce the impact of wide temperature swings. The enclosure also provides secondary containment. Avoid pumping the fuel from a tank being replaced into a new tank. Transferring fuel also transfers contaminants from the old tank into the new tank, and this can lead to premature tank failure. Try to schedule non-emergency tank replacements at a time when the tank being replaced will have little fuel remaining in it. If a replacement tank must be installed while the old tank contains a significant amount of fuel, consider the use of a temporary tank on site. While this may be slightly more expensive, it will extend the life of a new tank. During service calls and tune-ups, check filters and fuel units for the presence of water and rust. If there's water in the fuel system, there's water in the tank. In addition to causing no heat conditions, accumulated water can affect fuel quality and can cause other service issues. Tanks installed with direct fill pipes, such as underground tanks or above ground tanks installed outdoors, can usually be checked for water using a tank gauge stick and water indicator paste. Above ground storage tanks should always be checked at the lowest end of the tank. And where trace amounts of water are detected, complete removal may be impossible. However, efforts should be made to remove as much as possible. 
Now, with underground tanks, water usually accumulates due to mechanical failure of components, such as fill caps, gaskets, and vent caps. Less seldom, a broken or corroded fill or vent pipe may provide a means of water ingress. Checking basement tanks for water presents a unique set of challenges. In some cases, the tank is not pitched towards the bottom fitting, and in other cases, the bottom fitting was plugged at the time of installation. Tank top component removal to facilitate tank gauging should only be done when evidence exists that water may be present, such as excess water in the filter, rust in the fuel unit, or filter canister. Removal of tank top fittings requires those fittings be properly sealed after the gauging is completed to assure the tank integrity is maintained. Now, when water is found, it is important to remember that pumping out the water doesn't correct the situation, it merely treats the symptom. Sometimes accumulated water is the result of other problems with the tank or its components. When a measurable amount of water is identified, the customer should be advised of what repairs are recommended. The water should be removed, the source determined, and the problem corrected so that a recurrence is prevented. Let's take a look at external corrosion, which is the number one cause of failure for unprotected underground storage tanks. Moisture and oxygen in the soil combine with other elements to create corrosion cells. Above ground storage tanks are also subject to external corrosion, which is often caused by contact with walls and soil. Manufacturers instructions should be consulted for recommendations regarding tank placement and maintenance. The second most common reason for fuel tank failure is on-site damage. On-site damage is easily prevented with proper handling, installation, and maintenance. To prevent on-site damage, tanks should be installed in full compliance with manufacturer's instructions and the National Fire Protection Association's recommendations. They should be properly secured and supported. They need to be protected from weather, and they should be regularly inspected. The tank pictured here was installed in the garage, and it should have been protected with stanchions. The third most common reason for tank failure is transportation damage. Most often, transportation damage occurs when the tanks are mishandled while being moved to or at the job site. To prevent transportation damage, handle the tanks carefully, secure them while transporting them to the job site, and use the right equipment to move them into place. Let's take a look at the fourth most common reason for tank failure, manufacturing defects. Manufacturing defects account for the lowest percentage of tank failures because tanks that carry the UL label must pass several tests before being shipped from the factory. And tanks that fail are not being shipped. The best way to ensure that tanks perform reliably is to make sure that everything is done correctly. What does it mean to do everything correctly? Well, first, secure the tank during transport. Don't just shove them into the back of a truck where they can move and bounce around and get damaged. Use hand trucks or other devices to move the tanks from the truck to the installation site. Always follow manufacturer's instructions and NFPA guidelines. Be sure that installers have read and understood the instructions and all applicable codes and regulations. Install above ground storage tanks indoors wherever possible and advise the homeowner to install them in a protective enclosure if an inside installation is impossible or impractical. Carefully inspect the tank before removing the tank being replaced and clean and paint blemishes or scratches in the coating according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Drain the tank of water before the installation to greatly reduce the possibility of internal corrosion. Remember, no water equals no nest for microbes and a longer trouble-free life for the tank.